Have you ever been shooting an overhead flat light image and struggled with uneven lighting? Kind of like this image where it's brighter on one side, darker on the other. Well, I'm gonna show you how to use the gradient mask tool in Capture One to fix this problem. Now, this is part one of a three-part series of my favorite tools inside of Capture One. Now, if you've never used Capture One before, you can download a free 30-day trial down in the description box below. I've got a link for you. And you can also check out my Getting Started in Capture One video to help you in learning how to navigate the interface. But first, I wanna say a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for anyone who loves learning. Now, if you haven't checked out Skillshare before, it's definitely a go-to for me when I'm learning something new. It's the perfect place to get started. Like recently, I wanted to learn more about Adobe After Effects in order to up my stop motion editing skills. And so I was on the hunt for a basics course, like the basic basics, because everything I was finding in tutorials online was kind of skipping over the fundamentals and I wasn't able to follow along. But luckily, Skillshare to the rescue had a huge library of After Effects classes, including learn the basics of Adobe After Effects to create a moving portrait with Halise Narvaez. Now, Halise breaks it down in a way that's easy to follow, didn't make me feel stupid, and it made me excited to start using these new skills right away. From now navigating the interface to understanding keyframing, which was just mind blowing, plus also best practices so that I can feel confident doing these things in my work professionally. And as an educator myself, I really appreciate how well organized the class was, that it's straight and to the point, there's no unnecessary fluff. And so I could get what I need, get out and get back to creating. Now, you know, I am a firm believer in continuing your education and lifelong learning. And Skillshare is a wonderful way to invest in yourself and your personal growth. So you can go ahead to the description box below and the first thousand viewers to sign up through my link get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's play with some masks. So masks are awesome and the best way to describe them is that they're just like a mask that you would put on your face, right? You can put on a Halloween mask that covers your whole face or a sleep mask that only covers your eyes. So just imagine laying a mask over over top of your image and then making adjustments to that mask. So only the areas where the mask has been laid are being impacted by the mask. And of course, it's gonna help to see this in action. So I'm gonna show you. So like, for example, in this flat lay photo, which was a part of a Dolly Parton themed photo shoot that we did for fun recently, the light is positioned up at the top of the frame, making it brighter along that edge, but then darker along the bottom. Now, of course, we could make some adjustments to our lighting by working with a larger modifier or adding an additional light or getting a really big white V flat to bounce in more light on that lower corner. But if you're limited in your gear or you're limited on time, it's actually a super easy thing to fix here inside of Capture One when we get into editing. So in this particular image, I am using a linear gradient mask. So you can think of a linear gradient mask like a bed sheet that our background image is the bed and that the mask is the sheet on top of it. Now the linear part is that that mask is coming out as a straight line over the image, which you'll see in just a moment. And the gray gradient part is that it is a subtle fade from our mask into the background image, that it is gradually fading from one into the other, which helps this to be a more subtle edit and makes it undetectable to most viewers that there's even a mask over top of the image in the first place. But of course, it helps to see all of this in action. So let's jump into Capture One. I'm going to come over here into the Layers panel, and you can see that I have selected on here the Draw Linear Gradient Mask. And I know it's selected because the tool is now turned orange. And then if I come back out over onto the image, you can see that I have this plus sign, which indicates that I can start drawing my mask. So all you need to do is click, hold, and drag. So you're going to click and hold and drag. You go ahead and do that. And you can see now that we have these three lines coming out over on top of the image with then kind of this bright red area representing our mask. And you can see, right, like we talked about, the bed sheet, right? We're pulling the bed sheet up over top of the bed, up over our background image, and that there is a subtle fade from the mask into the background image. And now if I let go, it's gonna go ahead and leave that mask there. But you can see now here over in the layers panel, it has created this additional adjustment layer on top of our background image. 
Now in this situation, it's very easy to see that bright red area where the mask is. But say for example, you were capturing strawberries and we're editing an image of strawberries that's full of a lot of red. Then we would want to change the color of that mask to make it more visible. So we can easily do that by just going up here into the preferences, hit capture one, down into preferences. And then we see in the appearance area, we can go down to layers. And right now the mask is selected as red, but you can select any color on the color wheel that's gonna make it easier for you to see that mask. So coming back out to our mask, we can go ahead and pick that back up. Just click anywhere on it and you'll see that red is activated once again. Now again, notice that gradient, right? That gradual fade from that red into the background. The areas that are red are where the mask is. The areas that are not is where our original image will show through but we can make that gradient more gradual by just clicking on, you see how I get those two little lines that I can then grab the top line and pull it further apart. And you can see I've got more of a gradual fade. Whereas if I want it to be more of a sudden immediate fade, I can just go ahead and pull that down. You see it's a quicker transition, but I like to personally find a happy medium ground where I've got a nice subtle transition that's undetectable to a viewer. Now we can also rotate the mask by bringing our cursor back out over into the mask. And instead of kind of that plus sign, you see now we have the rotation symbol as you get closer toward the center of the mask. And that if I then click and hold and start to drag, it's going to rotate it one direction versus the other. And so for this particular image, we see that that lower left area is kind of the more shadowy area, that that's the area that I wanna balance out and bring some exposure and brightness to so it balances with the top right of the frame. So I'm just gonna rotate it ever so slightly towards the lower left and then release to drop it in place. And then if you wanna move it further across the scene, we just get that plus symbol again, and we can start to drag it up and drag it down until we've got it in that perfect location. And I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust the gradient ever so slightly here. And you can see that the mask is now a subtle fade into that lower left corner. Now, if these steps feel a little or a lot awkward, that is totally normal. I remember the first time activating this tool, it felt super out of control and I didn't know what was going on. So just go back through, rewatch the video, and play around with these steps. You will definitely get a feel for it and you will be a pro in no time. Now, when you release the mask, you take your cursor off of it and leave it where it was, you'll notice that that red color disappears. The layer mask is still there. It's just now allowing you to see how the changes we're gonna make here in a moment are impacting the image. That when we're selecting it, that allows us to see where it's going. But then when we deselect, that's allowing us to see that underneath image and we'll be able to see how our edits impact the image. And so now again, making sure that we are selected on the adjustment layer from here, we can make any adjustments to this image that we want. All of the tools that exist in Capture One are available to be used on this layer. So for example, I come down into the exposure area that I can increase the exposure and look what happens. I mean, let's get a little wild here and take it super bright, obviously that's not natural looking. But if I just boost it ever so slightly, and now I come in and I turn off the mask, and I turn it on, you can see how it's boosted the exposure just there in the lower left corner while keeping the upper right unaffected because there's no mask there, it's not changing. But I'm also not limited to just one adjustment that I can find a nice little happy medium here with the exposure. But then I can also say, for example, think that maybe I wanna open up the shadows just a little bit too, that I come down into the high dynamic range area and just slide that up to the left and that just subtly, you can see how that's just subtly opening up those shadows too to help balance things out. And that is the really awesome thing about Capture One and these layer masks that is slightly different from how things work, for example, in Lightroom. In Lightroom, you have more of a limited number of options that you can impact on that layer mask. Whereas here in Capture One, we can do any edits from the exposure, high dynamic range, colors, levels, Anything goes in those layer masks, you are not limited. But now there will be times that you lay down a mask on a scene and then you go, okay, I like how overall that's working, but I don't want it to hit just in this specific area. This is where we bust out our erase tool. So for example, here we have the gradient mask there in the lower left corner, but I'm looking here and I don't want it to increase the exposure on the lip of the plate. So all I have to do is while I'm still in that adjustment layer mask right here, 
And then I can select this right here is the eraser tool, the erase mask. And so now I'm still in the adjustment layer mask. So I can start to erase this mask in certain areas. You can see now my cursor is this little circle that I just come in here and I can start to draw over the mask. Do you see what's happening? It's erasing the red areas. So I know that now it's erasing the mask in those areas and allowing that original image to shine through. We can also refine the eraser itself by just holding down the control button and clicking. And you can see it's opened up our eraser settings. So we can adjust the size of that as well as the hardness of it. So is it more of a soft gradual edge to that brush or is it more hard and immediate? I like somewhere kind of in between. The opacity, is it laying it down super thick and we can't see through it? Or is it kind of more soft and we can see things glowing through? Think about like tracing paper, for example, that you lay over an image and you can see through it. The more opaque it is, the less see-through it is. And then the flow is kind of like ink. Do we want that ink going down fast and quickly or do we want it happening very slowly? So a lot of times for these settings, especially the hardness, opacity, and flow, I kind of find a nice little even middle ground so that I'm able to apply those changes, but then I'm building it up subtly kind of movement by movement. But now along those same lines, kind of a quicker shortcut that I use often when I'm using the erase tool or any sort of brush tools is to use the left and right bracket key that if I hit the left bracket key, you can see it makes that eraser tool smaller. I hit the right bracket key, it makes it larger so that I can adjust based on the size of the area that I'm trying to erase or trying to brush into. I want it fairly small here so I can just get into that lower small part of the plate. So now that we've erased the area, if we come back over just to see a little before the mask and after the mask, if we turn off the mask, we can see this is the original image that's underlaying the mask. We turn the mask on and it is not increasing the brightness there on the lip of the plate, but it is increasing the exposure in all the other areas where that mask is laid. Now, one of my other favorite features in the layers mask area in Capture One is that we can also impact the opacity of a layer. So to give you an additional level of control, in the effect of your masks. So for example, at 100%, right now we're slid into 100%, all of the adjustments that I made are impacting that image in the mask area at 100%. But if I decrease that opacity to 50%, it reduces the impact of the mask by 50%, allowing more of the original image properties to show through. Just like tracing paper allows you to see more of the underneath image. If you put a piece of tracing paper over an image, you can see more of that image as opposed to a solid piece of paper that's fully opaque, you can't see through it at all. It's like seasoning to taste an additional level of control in your editing. And so now if we wanna go back into the background layer and continue to make edits, we can absolutely do that. Just come back into layers and select the background and then we can continue to edit this image as we were before we got into the layer mask. But then we can also add additional layer masks if we want. We can, of course, make further edits to this adjustment layer, or we just select the plus sign to get an additional adjustment layer there, and then we have access to all the other mask options. We don't just have the linear gradient mask. We can also use the draw mask, the magic brush, the radial mask, the healing mask, the clone mask, lots and lots of options. Obviously, Capture One is a very deep software and lots to learn. But now say, for example, you've added a layer and you've made some adjustments and you ultimately decide, I don't want that layer anymore. You just want to delete it. You just come in here to the minus sign and it gets rid of that layer for you. So that's my little secret for editing flat lay images. We can see the before and the after. Again, it's subtle, but do you think it's convincing? And now I am super looking forward to the next video in this series where we're gonna play around with the overlay feature here in Capture One. If you've ever struggled with composition in your food photography, this tool is gonna save you so much time. So thank you so much for stopping by the studio. Hope you have a fantastic day. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon, okay? Bye.